All right. Hello, everyone. This is take four on this video. So I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet and to the point. Um, this video is not going to cover a lot of Netrunner play. If you want to see that, I just did two videos with the crew from Neon Static. I thought they came out really well. And the link to go and watch those is in the description. You should definitely check them out. They do a great podcast. And it looks like they're trying to get into the YouTube space as well with game commentary, which is something, you know, uh, I think Netrunner can always use more of. So definitely check those out. Um, but for the last month and a half or so, I've been spending most of my time on Netrunner trying to build the or update my single-sided Swiss app so that people can run Netrunner tournaments as single-sided Swiss. Uh, this video is going to be one part. Actually, the second half of the, the last half of the video is going to be me demoing Aesop's Tables, my website for doing that, which should now be up and running full time, fully accessible, all that stuff. Uh, link to that is also in the description. And the first half is going to be why I'm do why I was interested in it. Um, for those of you who haven't read any of my long articles on it, I guess I can put a link to my blog in the description as well. Um, but let me try and move through that quickly so that you guys can listen to that if you're interested, see the website if you're interested, and then hopefully I will get back to making real, got honest to God, Netrunner gameplay content. Uh, if you haven't, my most recent live streams, uh, especially the one closest to the date or the one preceding the date of this video where I actually put replay reviews in the name. I do some replay reviews of Andre's startup tournament, um, and I think those replay reviews are really helpful, so you should check them out. Double-sided Swiss is the premier and most dominant Netrunner format. The problem with it, from my perspective, is it incentivizes not playing games. Because in large events, there's a cut. And functionally, what that means is that to make it into the cut, you have to have a certain record. So, you know, in certain, in, you know, five round events, that might be that you have to have a record of seven and three or better. Um, and that means once you've lost three games, if you lose any more games, you're going to be eliminated. And the way that Swiss works is you get paired up against people with similar records as you. So as the event goes on, you get paired with people closer and closer to skill with you. But that might mean, let's say you've, you've got your three losses and you have two rounds to go and you're going into this round. If you and your opponent play Netrunner straight up, you have, you know, and you're a 50-50 matchup, which is a pretty reasonable assumption. Um, you have about a one in four chance of winning both games, a one in four chance of losing both games, and about half the time you're going to win one game and lose one game. So... This means that you have about a 1 in 4 chance of actually getting a record that's good enough to make it into the cut. And for your opponent, they also have a 1 in 4 chance of making it into the cut. And that's, you know, a little bit of a bummer, right? But it turns out there's a strategy that benefits both of you. So if you agree that whoever wins the first game also is counted as winning the second game, you go from having a 1 in 4 chance of making it to the cut to having a 1 in 2 chance of still being alive and having an opportunity to make it into the cut. This is what the community now knows as 2 for 1s, and they are basically an inherent property of the way that double-sided Swiss works. And I think it's kind of crummy. I think one of the things that people don't do, but definitely could, is two for one way more often than they currently are. If you think about it, if you have to get to seven wins, that's the same thing, you know, that's flipping seven coins uh, or ten coins and hoping that seven of them come up heads versus flipping three coin, uh, flipping five coins and hoping three of those come up heads. The odds are actually in your favor that if you're just trying to coin flip, 3 out of 5 is going to be easier to hit than 7 out of 10. I think there's a lot of good reasons that no one's ever going to go to that extreme in a Netrunner tournament, but it bumps me out that that is actually the optimal strategy. So, to account for that optimal strategy, I switched to what is called single-sided Swiss. The idea behind single-sided Swiss is you're going to play one match against a given opponent in a given round. And in that match, you'll be assigned Corp or Runner. 
The way this pairing algorithm works is it takes players who have played more corp games and pairs them against players with the closest record who have played more runner games. This ends up meaning that both everyone plays both of their decks the same number of times and gets to play against opponents of very similar skill level to what they would play in regular double-sided Swiss. But you don't have this cooperative element with your opponent where you can split the points of the match in ways that advantage you over players who don't split their points strategically. There are only three points up for grabs and that's the best you can do and you have a 50-50 chance regardless of the outcome, ignoring the chance of having ties. There is also some benefits where ties are less valuable. In regular Swiss, it is basically if you tie with your opponents and you both win one match, you each get half of the total points for the match. Whereas in single sided Swiss, tying is worth only a third of the points of a match. It's worth one point instead of three rather than three points out of six. Um, this makes tying a little bit less advantage for players that get off to a really strong start and you have to be doing better overall before you can start agreeing with your opponents to intentionally draw matches. So I think there's a lot of advantages to single-sided Swiss. I think the big ones that I want to hit home that are like one, I think it makes it so that everyone plays basically every game of Netrunner that they show up for, which I think is an advantage. It means that your standings are less prone to people, to randomness. It means that also something that can happen in two for ones is someone can just keep flipping corpse in their two for ones in a corp favored meta and coast to the cut, having played way more games with one side than the other. That's actually how I've done at the last several large events. I two for one roll my corp and, you know, get wins that I shouldn't get or something. So I think at uh, Worlds, no. At Continentals 2019, I played my runner deck like four or five times fewer than I played my corp deck over the course of the event. Another advantage that I think is easy to miss is because you play only a single game, the round timer is shorter. This means the effect of getting a buy is reduced. And I think that's actually a net good thing. It means that if you're going to play, if it's a three hour event, you're only missing half an hour, you're only missing one sixth of that event rather than one third of that event. And that's a huge chunk, right? If you show up and it's gonna be three rounds, the first round you sit out, you feel pretty bad. The second round you sit out, that also feels pretty bad. And if you get the third round, you basically just leave early most of the time because you know, you're know you probably not doing right if you get the buy in the third round. And I think that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, it also means that you like sitting for less time is nice. If you play fast matches of Netrunner, and I'm someone who does, uh, having shorter rounds means you get to keep going and you also get to meet more people and talk about Netrunner with more people and just have a, you know, it's a lot of what I like about Netrunner. There are people that disagree with me that really think a core part of Netrunner is playing both sides of your deck against, uh, or both sides against a single opponent, and that is something you lose. Another thing you do lose is you have a little bit more administration time to game time because doing, you know, if it's just five minutes of admin overhead every round, it's, you have more rounds basically where you have to repair people. Um, that's just an inevitable downside. A potential upside is you don't actually need to play as many rounds. Um, so you play slightly fewer, you can play slightly fewer games overall, get the same statistically powered results. So an equally good ranking of players by skill. And there's some links in the comments uh, to my blog where I talk about the math and you can talk with me about it there or on the comments for this YouTube video. I don't wanna get into too, too much detail about that. I hope I've made Aesop's tables actually more conducive to make the tournament just run faster and better so that um, we can mi you can minimize that amount of time. Um, and without further ado, I want to actually switch over and show Aesop's Tables. So this is Aesop's Tables. Uh, I made a recording event already, uh, so it's a little bit of a bummer. Basically, the system works. You will log in if you want to be a tournament admin. You'll just make a password and an account as per normal. Um, I am collecting an email address, but not currently using it. So if you don't feel like giving an email address to someone who you don't know and maybe don't trust, you're totally free to put whatever you want in that text field. I don't actually have a good use for it yet. Um, you know what, we're just gonna make a brand new event. So once you're logged in, you'll see this create tournament. 
you'll be able to create a tournament. You can give it a name, a second demo video. And we will do this. Um, we'll make it today. We will create a tournament and you'll be presented with this screen. So you'll be able to basically register players. So this can be player one. Uh, they will just play Acme 419. And then you can just go through and add players like that. Another thing that's just sort of the default is that if you are not logged in and you're just a player, you can register yourself too. So you can say, I'm player two. I'm going to play Earth Station and uh, Smoke. And boom, you show up. So um, the goal is that People can quickly register themselves. TOs can have this easy. At some point in the future, I will enable it so the TOs can set the registration off or uh, you know, turn it on and off for player registration. Um, but I wanted to get this video out quick with I think the minimum viable features and we'll try and build up for more features in the future. All right, so this is my eight player event. I've just added the eight players and I go over to look right before I submit and I realize, uh-oh, I put in the wrong name for player number six. I'm able to just go in, hit edit, or it's player seven, I should say, change their name. I can also say, hey, I need to update their ID. They're actually not playing Padma, they're playing Ayla. Boom, and there they are. This ordering doesn't, you know, obviously doesn't matter. It's just in kind of registration order. Once that's done and I've entered all my players, I can simply just hit the pair round and it shows up. Over here, there's, uh, there'll be a UI to navigate between different rounds. And when you're logged in as the tournament runner, you'll have these buttons for corp win, tie, runner win, and then delete match. This is for if you want to adjust the pairings. I imagine you'll mostly only do this in round one. You know, let's say player one and player seven drove up in a car together for three hours. Maybe you don't want them paired against each other around one. You want to mix it up. So you could delete the match. And then this edit pairings will allow you to assign. Uh, you could also say, hey, player one and player seven swapped. You know, you said, oh, player one, you're going to court. But accidentally, uh, player two run. You can just uh, you could delete this match. Go to edit pairings. And we'll say uh, player seven is going to corp, player one is going to run, and we will call it table number four. Uh, and this has a bug where this table number shows up as none. I need to fix that, but it doesn't actually affect anything. You can click back to round one. You can report the result of the match. Um, and we'll just go and do this. So we should look to see that player one has played their corp one more, or their runner one more time. And that is, in fact, what we see. So at the end of any odd numbered round, people have played their corp and runner a different number of times. And so you get people who played their corp more, runner more, and etc. So what the goal of what the algorithm is trying to do is pair people up such that um, people that have played their corp more often are going to play against people who have played their runner more often. And then it's going to say, let's find people of the closest score. So this is a very nice round where what we would expect to see is something like five plays six and seven plays two. Uh, though you could also get five plays um, two and six plays seven. And they will be set up so that player five who corped in round one will run in round two. But what happens if instead of these results, uh, you know, we get three runner wins? Uh, so now we have runner, 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 corp. So one of these, this player seven is going to play against one of players two, four, or six, and then two, four, and whoever isn't paired. So let's play, let's say for the sake of example, that six plays seven, four and two will get paired against one of the set of three, five, and eight. Basically, the reasoning for this is I think it's more important to make it so that everyone plays their both sides an even number of times. This means that if one side is a bit better, we're not overvaluing one win for a stronger side. And two, everyone does get to play both of their decks an even number of time over the course of the event. So when we go to pair round, we see that players, um, so player seven played player two, then players four and six are going to have paired down to players eight and five. And so then you just resolve this round as normal. So, you know, we'll just kind of flip some coins uh, and we will conclude the round. And now everyone's back to having an equal balance of sides. And this round will pair like regular Swiss. So player two and player four will play against each other. Then eight and seven, six and one, five and three. 
Um, and that is exactly what happened. Now, I don't think we've had this happen yet, but something that can happen in small events, and really actually any size event, is that players can play against each other a second time. You can have a rematch, and it's guaranteed to be the side you haven't played against each other already. Um, so we'll just kind of fill things out a little bit at random. Um, and then we will pair them around again. Has two played eight? I don't think so. Two has played four, two has played seven, and two has played eight. So actually we do see that, and we see that four and eight, two and eight, are now playing opposite sides. Um, and, you know, that's that's the goal of the algorithm. It's not that you can't pair up against someone else, but that you are forced to only pair against them with the opposite side. But the most important thing is to balance out sides. Um, so you can go through this and then you can decide at some point and I'll have a record. There's a there will be a recommendation under this how to on how many rounds to run. Um, and there's also one in the, the null signal games organized play policies. You can do a, a cut to eliminations. Right now I have fixed eliminations of top four double limb, top eight double limb, 16 double limb, and then a top three single limb and a top four single limb. So this style event, top three single limb is probably gonna be it. You click to that, you as the admin can swap sides. Um, you know, uh, typically in cuts, uh, one player, the player who comes in with the higher seed, so the way you would look at that is say, oh yeah, player one here is higher seed than player eight. We get to choose their side, and maybe they win their game, and you pair the next round, and then you have player two up against player one. Uh, you can also see back here, as the results finish out, there's the top three final standings. Um, and we will say that... Uh, and then for single limb cuts, I would recommend that, uh, or in particular for a top three cut, the top first seed should get choice of sides again. Um, for a top four cut, the algorithm is going to try to balance it out so that both players have played both sides evenly. But if like say both players won round one as corp, it will just flip a coin to see who's gonna corp and run. I would suggest leaving it um, but that's up to you. And then the double-sided Swisses, it's going to randomize and suggest, and I would recommend leaving it in all cases because what it's trying to do is minimize it so that both players have played the same side the same number of times. It's never going to be perfect, but it's going to do its very best. When you're done, you can just hit pair next round, and that's it. You're all set. You've run your event successfully. If you want to then upload it to always be running, there is a button that says export to ABR. This is going to create a download for you. And then you can just download this JSON, open up always be running. Um, and if I had an existing event, there would be uh, something for me to do. But otherwise, uh, I would go. So if I had a tournament, I could update it. Um, Actually, here, I can show if I had an example event, I could... Oh, I would go into here and I would... Oh, I think because it hasn't happened yet, it's not going to let me. Hold on. Uh, so I could create this tournament from the results. I could browse, grab my JSON file, um, and conclude via import. And then I would have to give it some... I have to give it some details. Um, and we're just going to put in a random location somewhere in the world. Um, and so, boom, it's all there. It's got your rank, it's got your players, it's got everyone's points um, and all that stuff. So you should be able to very quickly go and just export, import, whatever you want to do. Uh, and hopefully this tool is helpful for people that want to run single side Swiss events. If you find bugs, please let me know. Uh, Discord and Stim Slack are the two best places to find me probably. There are also, if you find issues or want to submit your own code, the GitHub repo is linked on the website. So thank you all for watching and I hope to be here with more Netrunnery Netrunnery content in the near future. So thanks for watching and uh, stay frost. So thanks for watching.